Welcome to the Free Truth Show on TNSradio.com. We are live, ladies and gentlemen. Hello to everybody out there in the chat box. And um, we have a few guests lined up tonight. We have uh, the filmmakers, uh, the filmmakers of Don't Tread on Me. Debbie Lewis will be dropping in for a chat about the Don't Tread on Me film. Um, and hopefully we'll, be get, we'll get her on the Walking Turtle show on Saturday night too. And uh, I have on the line Mr. Bob Chapman. We have been talking to Bob Chapman from the International Forecaster, and I'm thrilled that he's able to come back and have another chat with us. So if you're still listening, Bob, thank you, and have a great day now. And um, we have on the line, I'm just going to explain a bit about this film that I have here with me. It's Don't Tread on Me. Rise of the Republic, and it features R.J. Harris, Michael Badnick, Alex Jones, Charles Key, Cynthia Davis. And I'm just going to read out from the back here. Uh, Don't tread on me, Rise of the Republic. From the Tea Party movement to state legislators, the American people are drawing a line in the sand. On what side of it will you stand? Has the government our founders created been forgotten by Washington, D.C.? Is Patriot Uprising ready to capture the spirit of 1776? Don't Tread on Me gives the viewer a look into the movements, mindset and legislation that will catapult the great restoration into households across America. What is the choke collar the federal government uses to rein in the states? Are the states sovereign or subjects of Washington, D.C.? What did the founders foresee and how did they seek to protect us from a tyrannical government? Don't Tread on Me exposes the Commerce Clause, defines sovereignty, the proper role of government, a constitutional militia, and much more. Don't Tread on Me offers sound solutions to take back rights stolen by the out-of-control, despotic federal government. Don't Tread on Me will educate, inspire, and activate a nation desperately seeking direction. What side of the line will you stand? And the American people have awakened. The, the Patriot Uprising, what some people might call the Tea Party Movement, whatever you want to call it. And when the Patriot Uprising uh, occurred, it, it, it really occurred and gained steam because the American people got fed up. In the last 20 years, we've seen an acceleration away from our Constitution Bill of Rights and towards absolute despotism. When it reaches the stage that you can look at what's going on and say, well, this is just a series of usurpations, abuses, which are leading inexorably to this result, then it is not simply one's right, it is your duty to take this kind of action. And I sincerely hope that enough people have crossed that personal line in the sand where they will join forces with the rest of us so that a small number of us are not required to use force and uh, use of arms. Sheriff, you took an oath to uphold and defend and obey the United States Constitution. When it matters most is now. You mean from now on, the Cartwrights don't fight their own battles anymore? Is that what you're saying? From now on, whenever we get into any kind of trouble, we have to go begging for help? Not begging, it ain't begging. Well, then what is it if it isn't begging? Because 30 years from now, somebody's going to ask you what you did during the Patriot Uprising. The time when you have to defend yourself from the government is when the law becomes lawless. We're drawing the line in the sand and we're saying this is our territory. No, absolutely not. I will never take a mandatory vaccination. There might be shooting that day. Uh, I'm going to do what I need to do to protect my family. It's up to us to fix the mess. But this Interstate Commerce Clause has been interpreted so broadly as to literally affect every aspect and phase of American life. What are our obligations of citizenship? The thing to fear the most is not a person with a gun, but a government that would take that gun away. A well-regulated militia is necessary to that purpose. If they want to stop the federal government, they, they have to find a vehicle. They have to find something that's couched either in law or the Constitution. There are tough times on Main Street. Unemployment reached double digits and small businesses are struggling to stay alive. The answer to 1984 is 1776.
and it's my great pleasure to introduce you to Debbie Lewis, who is one of the makers of this film. Are you with us, Debbie? I am. Thank you for having me, Patrick. Uh, it's my pleasure. It's a great film. I recommend it to anybody. I'm going to leave links up for people to see it. It's really inspiring. It, it um, uh, for want of a better word, it kicks ass. It's a great, <laughs> great movie. Did you have fun well, making it? My pleasure. Yeah. Did you have fun making it? Oh, absolutely. You know, we had a few challenges here and there, as always, but that's okay. You know, that happens, and especially when you're trying to get the, you know, truth out, things happen, and but yeah, there's you know the 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 people in the film have so much to say, and you know Michael Badnerick and yeah. Tom DeWeese, Doctor Vieira, Richard Mack is a great guy, Alex Jones another great guy, and several of the legislators here in Missouri. We live we live in Missouri, and that's why several of the legislators that we interviewed happen to be from Missouri. Right, uh, but right. they were right, but they were sponsoring bills that fit in exactly with the pre premise of the film which was state sovereignty um so yeah. you know it was important to get their input since we live here <laughs> but yeah it was that it, it's it's really opened my eyes you know one of the things that people don't understand especially in america we take things for granted i, I, I know the world sees that but americans uh -huh. don't see it we think we know everything you know all right. And so <laughs> we we learn in in school, you know, we read our constitution in school and you know, we go over it a little bit, talk about it, and nobody ever thinks about it again, but you can't protect what you don't know you're losing and you can't protect your rights if you don't know what they are. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. Well, us on the Freeman Island site, we it's set up to explore uh, the nature of sovereignty, and that, that it, it's exactly uh, the very thing that we mainly discuss. Solutions, uh, re-establishing uh, responsibility for your own fresh flesh and blood sovereignty, and they look into a great deal um, uh, common law and how it can be applied and how we can reclaim our sovereignty and uh, ways to defeat uh, criminal legislation uh, just by ignoring it and saying no contract, you know. So you, exactly. it's a, it, it, you're on, you're in the right place to, to chat. <laughs> there's a lot of very interested people here. There's uh, lots of people online, and there's a chat that people can fire questions at you, and you you, okay. you you'll get probably more sovereign questions than than, than a lot of other places. So, well, no, I hope company. I can answer them. <laughs> oh, I'm sure, you would. Uh, you're in good company. Oh, um, wonderful and. You know, it's it's good to it's good that uh, that people are concerned. It's good that that people understand that there is an issue at hand and it needs to be taken care of. And we're going to have a hard time moving forward if we can't take care of this business now and protect yeah. our rights as defined simply in the Bill of Rights in the Constitution. Well, the Constitution is the the founding. Uh, grit of America, and I was explaining to Bob Chapman just how obvious it was to me that Americans, um, at least until recently, were very, very proud of that uh, constitution, uh, even though it's been um, watered down in schools now, and oh, uh, yeah. instilled less um, into people via the indoctrination of the, exactly. of the education system. Um, well. How do you how do you how do you see uh, sovereign nature? What's your definition of sovereignty? Because it it, it can be a grey area for some people. How is it viewed uh, in your quarter? Well, you know, I would say sovereignty, you know, is is my control over me as a sovereign. No one has control over me. Makes exactly, me a right. sovereign. Yeah, right. that's my view. Exactly. And so, but I think with that power comes responsibility. I also need to be responsible for myself. You know, I, I don't need someone to be responsible for me. I can do it myself. If I make a mistake, I need to fix the mistake and move forward. I don't need the federal government telling me you made a mistake and we're going to force you to do it.